My name is Garcia Ophaya. I am a 2005 RCSI graduate and I'm delighted to be asked to present at this very first virtual alumni gathering. 2020 has been a challenging year, but along with the challenges, it's also brought innovative ways for us to gather. For example, this virtual conference that has been organized. I'm going to tell you a little bit about me and I hope you enjoy my talk, but I also hope you enjoy the program of events that has been organized as part of the alumni session. I am the eldest of five children, all of whom are doctors. I was born in the 70s in the Rotonda Hospital when my parents were studying in Trinity College. We lived in Dublin and then moved on to Tralee in County Kerry and then moved back to Dublin in the 1990s. And I completed my secondary education in Dominican College, Griffith Avenue, after we returned back to Dublin. I have two children of my own, Chloe and Bella, aged nine and seven, and they are the joy of my life. I also am a very family person. I love nature. I spend a lot of time in nature with my two kids. Um, I volunteer within the community. I also volunteer at international events and national um, activities as well. But I think being part of a community is a huge part of what we do. And I help in several activities locally, like board of management of the school and involved in other parish activities as well. But there is a serious side to me as well, and that's my professional career. As I mentioned earlier, I'm a 2005 graduate. After my undergraduate medical education, I went into surgery with a special interest in breast disease. As well as my interest in clinical work, I'm hugely interested in medical education. As such, I'm a senior lecturer in my alma mater, our CSI. In our CSI, I look after the clinical years in the Department of Surgery. My role focuses on the delivery of surgical curriculum and preparing our doctors for the workforce and growing them for future doctors. As well as delivery of the surgical curriculum, I'm very interested in communication skills, which is a key component of what we do as doctors, communication with our patients on a day-to-day -day basis. I have been a member of the International Association for Communication in Healthcare, and I lead the cross-cultural subgroup within that. Health disparities are huge around the world and improving the diversity of health and workforce is a key component of dealing with disparities within health. I feel communication, especially cross-cultural communication, is a key component of cultural competency training. And RCSI, with a diverse student body, is key in delivering and helping with this diverse workforce. I'm also involved in extracurricular activities within RCSI. I'm a senior judge and I've had the privilege of doing that for the Biological Society for the past few years. As you're aware, the Biological Society is one of the oldest societies in RCSI. It's incredible the high standard our students bring when they present at the senior competitions. The other part of my time is spent as a national clinical lead for intern training. This is a role that is governed by the Medical Council and the National Doctors Training and Planning within the Health Service Executive in Ireland. Intern year is a very first year of postgraduate training. In this role, I work closely with the Medical Council, the Department of Health and the HSE in delivering a quality 
comparable training experience for interns across the country. And this is for the benefit of both doctors and patients. In my role as clinical lead, I initiated the modernization of the intern year project. And this project was aimed to reform and modernize the intern year program. Aspects of the project include reviewing or revising the national intern training curriculum, implementing entrustable professional activities as a method of evaluating interns' performance for sign-off at the end of their intern year, reviewing the quality of intern posts across the country, and aspects of preparedness for practice. I believe that these elements of the modernization project will help create a better intern experience for our doctors as they start their postgraduate training in Ireland. Within NDTP, I'm also involved in workforce planning, which I think is a great opportunity to actually see, see students from medical school through to internship, through to postgraduate training and helping to service the health service executive within Ireland. 2020 has been a challenge for everyone with the COVID pandemic. At the initial stages of the pandemic, I played a significant role in the recruitment of new doctors. This was to help with the crisis that was at hand. I led a collaborative project with the Department of Health and with other stakeholders in getting over a thousand doctors into the workforce eight weeks ahead of the normal changeover. This was a challenge in time. However, I think the biggest challenge and the biggest sacrifice was with our new graduates and graduates across the country who had to take their exams significantly earlier and enter the workforce significantly earlier. And we are extremely grateful for the sacrifices that our students have made during this period. People always ask me, how do I manage to juggle all my roles as well as family life as well as other activities that I'm involved in. I don't believe in superpowers. I don't have any superpowers. However, I do believe in hard work and persistence. As Michelle Obama says, with hard work and a good education, anything is possible. I'm determined to make a difference in people's lives. I also believe that some of my values of care, compassion, hard work and transparency have helped me both in my role as senior lecturer in RCSI, but also in my national role in the HSE. These values are part of improving the health service experience both for our staff and for our doctors. I have many personal and professional identities on a day-to-day -day basis. I wear different hats at different times. And I'm motivated by the intersection of these identities. Kimberly Crenshaw coined a term intersectionality in 1989. She described this term to identify the intersection of different identities that individuals have and how they overlap. This idea that we all have different identities and it intersects at different times sparked an interest with me, especially because I personally have different identities and wear different hats at different times. And this was the origin of my PhD studies. My PhD looks at exploring female surgeons' identity constructions. It's a qualitative study with female surgeons, patients of female surgeons, and colleagues of female surgeons. I am currently at the write-up stage of my PhD, which is excellent. 
it has been an interesting study. And some of the novel findings of my study show how female surgeons construct their own identities, identities around gender and ethnicity, around gender and motherhood, around other identities, including age and their professional identities. Interestingly, patients and colleagues of female surgeons also construct these identities for female surgeons around this common intersections of female and motherhood. Interestingly, my study has shown that female surgeons can achieve a balance between their personal and their professional identities. I look forward to writing up and finishing up my PhD and to extending the literature on this topic. So to finish, I have been in RCSI for over 18 years. First, as a medical student, then as an MD postgraduate student, and now as a staff. Our CSI has truly educated and nurtured me to be one of the best leaders making a difference in healthcare. I join millions of alumni across 97 countries worldwide to lead the world to a better health. I have been empowered by our CSI and I'm truly grateful. I do hope you enjoy the virtual alumni scientific meeting and I hope to see you all soon. Thank you.